Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on Liz The One TV. I'm your girl, Liz The One. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for your girl. So what's going on? Why is Evelyn Lozada trending on Twitter? Well, I'll tell you why. Evelyn Lozada is crying on Instagram. And no, it's not about her daughter. No, it's not about Shawnice. This is about Ocho Cinco this time. So what's going on, Liz? Let's start from the beginning. Well, I'll start from the beginning for you, okay? So Ocho Cinco on Twitter posted, I lost my temper for once in life for three seconds and it cost me a lifetime's worth of work. I got it all back plus some after getting a second chance and nothing will ever get me out of that happy space again, okay? And then you see that he... It's pretty much a conversation going on with somebody and, and this person said, well, what's the secret? How do you stay so positive? Was it therapy? Not being funny, really asking for myself. So Evelyn Lozada, uh, even though he didn't mention her by name, I will give her this one thing. You can kind of read between the lines and you can tell what situation it is. But it didn't really, you know, call for this um dramatic performance and i'm gonna put a snippet of the video up and then the rest will just be audio and then i'll stop it at some point so here it is hey so i wanted to you know respond to a few things um a few weeks ago i was actually going to you know discuss certain things and decided not to um but i think today is you know the perfect time to address things that are on my heart um you know, I woke up today to, to, you know, Chad's comment and as, mu as much as I told myself that I wasn't going to respond because it's not the first time that he's made this comment, um, I'm just tired, you know, I'm really, really tired and I, for this man to sit up there and say that, you know, he lost his temper for three seconds is infuriating to me you know and as much as i'm trying to heal from this situation that's been i've been dealing with this shit for years you know not only because i'm on a show just everything is just so public so you know as much as i'm trying to heal from this it's messages like this it's tweets or whatever the hell it was that are triggers for me okay and you know for this man to say you know uh, um he, it was once incident three seconds of his life he lost everything and then what you know what happens it's a it's it's a, it affects you know people read this on social media and then are, are are you know coming at me talking about oh you made this man lose his job it's like if you're gonna speak the truth i want you to speak the truth as to what the situation was okay it wasn't the first time it wasn't the first time and 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 one of the things that i'm always gonna do is i'm always gonna live in my truth whether it's good whether it's bad whether it's ugly okay and 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 put this perception out there for a pity party as if you made one mistake you know and i'm trying to move on from this but as a victim, how am I supposed to move on? And I'm not looking for attention. I was at home. I'm minding my own fucking business. And then I have to deal with this. And it's hurtful to me. It's hurtful to me because I know my truth. And I've never, I have never discussed anything else that has ever happened other than the incident that people know. Because I always was concerned about his kids and our kids and always having to relive this. But you can't make comments like this. And expect for nobody, especially me, that I'm on the other end of this to feel how I feel, okay? And then when it comes to, you know, basketball wives, I know that people, you know, tend to connect, you know, my character on this show with what happened to him. And I understand that to a certain degree, you know, I get it. I, I take full responsibility. I know I'm the one on this show. I'm no... I'm the one that hasn't been the most positive person. I know I'm the one that has made us look bad. And I'm sorry. And I understand that I didn't always handle things the right way. You know, 
I am and, and I'm I'm embarrassed. I am. I'm embarrassed and, and I'm embarrassed sometimes for my family because like this is a forever thing, you know? And but my care my the, the person that I am on basketball wives and who I am as a mother and how I've been in my personal relationships, whether it be with Carl or Chad, are two totally different things. And what happened to me that day and other days, I didn't deserve. I didn't deserve that because I have always been a good woman. I have always been a great mom. I have always been a great stepmom. And you know, I apologize to just the world and everybody just for not being the most positive person um, when you were watching the show and sitting in the house and, and, and maybe saying certain things and maybe at the time it was funny and it wasn't. Because of everything that's going on, I know I have to do better. I know I have to do better. So anyone that is dealing with domestic violence, you don't let nobody when I tell you, you don't let nobody fucking take away your truth. You don't let nobody make you feel like you're wrong for being honest and speaking up about something that happened to you. Okay. Okay. So you guys just heard that. So let me just go further and put this into context. Let me go further back. Um, a few years ago, she was on TMZ Sports and Van Lathan was interviewing her and Shawnee O'Neal was sitting next to her. Now, in this interview, Van pretty much said something to the effect of, and I'm going to paraphrase here. He pretty much said, if you were uh, stranded and, you know, your life was on the line, who would you call? Now, mind you, she had just gotten out of a relationship with Carl Crawford and she has a son by Carl, by Carl Crawford. She said it took her a minute to answer. And Shawnee O'Neal pretty much knew what she was going to say, but she comes out and she said that she would call Chad. Now, I know you guys are going to say Liz, but that's not how abuse works. I get how it works, but let me keep going. Now, another incident last year on Basketball Wives. I don't know if you guys remember this or not. I did quite a few videos on this um, and her behavior was so disgusting to where I said that I would not, uh, you know, review Basketball Wives ever again. Um, here's the thing on basketball wives, when OG brought up the fact that Chad Ochocinco was sitting up there trying to DM her, uh, because Evelyn was making remarks about how she thought that OG was ugly and all of this other stuff. Um, and OG pretty much said that, you know, Chad wanted it. Evelyn Lozada had zero issues or zero problems with hitting Chad Ochocinco up with what she called quote unquote receipts. And in these receipts, Chad Ochocinco omitted certain things. Now, she hit him up and she talked about her hitting him up on the show. And, you know, she wasn't crying then. OK, and she brought these receipts to um, OG. But OG said, no, honey, you're missing something. And she showed Evelyn the real receipts. And then Evelyn, you know, pretty much had egg on her face, felt stupid. And then I believe it was an episode later. You, you want to sit up here. She's sitting up here saying things to the effect of you want to sit up here and torment me with my abuser. But here's the thing. You reached out to that abuser for receipts. You see what I'm saying? And so I have a problem with that. And you're probably saying, but Liz, once again, you're going to say it again. That's not how abuse works. I know how abuse works. Evelyn knows how abuse works. Evelyn has sat on this show and abused countless black women. Um, she's pretty, she slapped Jennifer Williams in the face when Jennifer Williams told her that she didn't think that her relationship with Chad Ochocinco was a good idea. Um, because Jennifer Williams saw something and she turned out to be right. Now, I'm not a huge Jennifer Williams fan. She does get on my nerves from time to time, you know, her portrayals on TV. But she was right about that relationship. You didn't have a problem with slapping her. Um, you didn't have a problem with throwing a wine bottle at Kenya in a cellar. Um, you didn't have a problem with hopping over a table to Jennifer Williams. You didn't have a problem um sitting up there trying to embarrass or fight Royce Reed, but Royce Reed was tough. She stood up to you and she was ready to fight you. You didn't have a problem with bullying all of these women and you bully weak people. And it's not just the black women. Um, she abused Susie. Susie was up her butt and around the corner. She sat up there last season and tried to bully Cece Gutierrez, who is now Cece Scott because she married Byron Scott. Um, 
and pretty much she tried to sneak Cece and Cece was not trying to fight her. The only reason she was not able to hit um, Cece with, you know, the branch that she was trying to hit her with, like a little uh, whipping branch or something that, you know, Evelyn pulled, is because OG caught her, spun her and put her in the bushes, which is why I show this image as often as I can when I talk about Evelyn Lozada to sit up here and paint her character. Don't sit up here and tell me, you know, well, this is just your character on the show. No, this is your character in life because this is a reality show and your BFF Shawnee O'Neill was the executive producer, so she could edit in your favor. So if that was editing in your favor, something's not right, okay? Um... I know that people are going to say, you know, Liz, that's apples and oranges. It's kind of not. Evelyn Lozada, this is her behavior and this is who she is. I Listen, I do not condone. And let me just say this. So don't come in my comment section like Liz, you know, domestic violence is wrong. I know that it's wrong. I do not condone it in any way, shape or form. But most victims of domestic violence are not horrible people. They're really good people who meant well and they got hooked up with just terrible people that sit up here and take advantage of them and abuse them. Evelyn Lozada, I, this, I don't agree with this image. I felt bad for you when it happened. When I heard that it happened, no woman deserves this. However, you didn't have a problem with hitting your quote unquote abuser up for receipts when you thought that it was going to down a black woman. When you thought that she was so ugly to where you thought that she couldn't pull a man like Chad Ochocinco and she proved, you know, you wrong. So my issue is you don't get to pick and choose when he's your abuser. He's your abuser all the time. So the next time that you want to pull some stuff about this, you know, like about Ocho Cinco every time he says something or he sneezes wrong and he winds up on TV. The next time you like are ready to have a fake meltdown that you had time to put on lip gloss for and, you know, you weren't even crying initially when the video started. You know, it took you a minute and then I really didn't see any tears like that. But the next time you want to do this, maybe picking up the phone and talking to your therapist might be better. Maybe picking up the phone and calling your mom or your sister or you have an adult daughter. Maybe calling your adult daughter to vent might be better. Maybe calling um, Lightbub Head Nostril O'Neill might be better. Um, but don't do this, okay? Don't sit up here and compare your abusive situation to Rihanna's. Um, Rihanna... Like, you know, whenever she wants to talk about her situation, maybe she'll do it. But in the meantime, she's taking the high road. She's trying to move on with her life. But my issue with you is you don't get to pick and choose when this man is your abuser. OK, you don't get to pick to love him one minute and then be be scared of him the next. Stay away from him. You've been away from him long enough to um, move on with your life because you have a young child and single digit numbers with Carl Crawford. So the fact that you are comfortable calling Carl, uh, calling Chad Ocho Cinco over Carl Crawford, whom you have a child with is a problem. Okay. Um, like I said, I just really want to paint this out and you guys give me a like, um, make sure you share this, leave me a comment, make sure you subscribe to this. I just want to paint this. You've been abusing countless black women, dark skinned black women, on basketball wives for a very long time you couldn't really pull that with tammy roman because tammy would have dog walked you but when og came on to that show you and nostril o'neill you all went above and beyond the call of duty to sit up here and try to make it seem like she's being aggressive you all paint tried to paint that woman out as aggressive and you kept using terms like you know she's being aggressive you know trigger words that you know a lot of white women use to sit up here and paint black people in bad lights. So the fact that Shawnee O'Neal would sit up here and participate that disgust me. You know, here's my issue. You have a six year old or I think he's seven. He might be seven or eight now. You've been away from this man for damn near a decade, not been with him. So the fact that you're still bringing up his name is a problem. OK, is a huge problem. OK, OK. I know he was physically abusive to you. You do not deserve that. But at the same token, you do not get to sit up here and, and physically abuse other people, black women on reality TV. And then now all of a sudden you're the victim. And it's not just limited to black women, because what you tried to do to Cece until she got with your ass at that table was point blank, period, disgusting. OK, 
Every time somebody messages your adult daughter, you want to sit up here and cry. When you, you, you didn't have a problem with bringing up Jackie Christie's daughter, but now all of a sudden when she brought up your daughter, now all of a sudden, you know, you're ready to fight. But Jackie got with your ass. My thing is this. You don't get to pick and choose when you want to be a victim. It doesn't work like that. So um, I hope you grow up. You're too damn old. But the next time um, I get that he abused you and I'm sorry that that happened to you. However, the next time don't hop your bobblehead itself onto Instagram. Seek your therapist. Call your pastor. You, you got baptized again. Call your pastor. Call your daughter. Call your sister. Call your mom. Call, call Jesus, okay? But don't hop onto Instagram and like perpetuating this you're the victim all the time mentality because after what happened, after you tried to bully OG, after you tried to bully all of these women, we've seen you over the years, for years, a long time, over a decade, just bullying other women, um, fighting them, hopping over tables just being really vicious and aggressive because aggressive can be used in Evelyn Lozada's case after we've seen you being aggressive to other women which you all tried to paint OG as you don't get to sit up here and come on here and try to make it seem like you know you're so docile and you're so innocent and now you're the victim of everything it doesn't work like that he's you know like and I'm just gonna leave it at that a lot of people may not ab agree with my opinion I don't really care you feel free to drag me in the comment section down below um you can agree with me or disagree with me um I know some domestic violence survivors and they were really good people. And, um, you know, I've seen them get frustrated and act out, but not quite like Evelyn Lozada. They don't go around trying to bully people. It usually started off like as a codependent situation and they were really just trying to help and rebuild somebody. And in the end, they wound up getting abused. You see what I'm saying? So, um, for them, they didn't really have very many options and it took so much for them to get out of those situations and for you to sit up here and be out of the situation, having been with, you know, um, another man and like, you know, just you, you keep trying to play this victim, but I'm over it at this point. I'm sorry that that happened to you. No woman deserves to be head butted by her husband. No woman deserves that. But then again, those women that you set up there and abused, they didn't deserve you throwing bottles at them, hopping across tables, slapping them, you know, yelling at obscenities at them. You using the N word over and over and over again, even though you're not black. They didn't deserve that. But for some weird reason, you keep getting passes on that. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Thanks for clicking on Liz the One TV. I'm your girl, Liz the One. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Peace out.